When you're ready to design a website, you're going to have to make a lot of choices around what it looks like, how it flows, and how it converts. Today we're going to talk about the top 10 biggest mistakes we make in website design and how to avoid them. So throughout my career, I have seen a lot of websites, hundreds and hundreds, and built hundreds of websites myself. And I've seen some very specific mistakes that people make with their websites, especially as they start to iterate version one, version two, version three. Also, these iterations also affect their ongoing findability as well. So today we're gonna to talk about the 10 biggest mistakes that business owners make in designing their website. So I'm gonna give you my top 10 and we're gonna walk through some of the reasons why these things happen. So the first thing is you move the logo. So we read left to right, okay, left to right. So reason the logo is in that corner is because that's where our eye starts. Our eye starts here, right, we rest, we read left to right. Don't put the logo in the middle of the page because your eye's like, what, is it? what are you doing right now? There's a reason the logo is in the left corner, then the phone number is all the way at the end of the right corner. So that I start on the logo and then I move all the way across and then I see a big no, a big phone number. So the number two mistake I see is hidden phone numbers. You know, a phone number should not be a scavenger hunt on your homepage. Don't make me work so hard to call you and work with you. Make it super big. I like to think of it as big ass phone number in the top right corner of your website. Don't make me hunt for that guy. The next biggest mistake is no call to action. No more than three things you could ever ask of anyone on any page of your website, and even that I think is generous. When you come to a website, you should be able to immediately see what's in it for me. Download this white paper, schedule a findability review, attend a workshop. There's only so many things that you can give them as calls to action. So be very, very careful about what you ask of them. A confused mind never buys. So the more you confuse them, the harder it is for them to work for you, work with you. So make sure you know what is that call to action that's gonna be on every single page of your site. Mine is schedule a findability review, full stop. I want everyone to set up a findability review so we can take a look under the hood of their website and see what's really going on. The next one is hidden social media. Your social media is hidden in the footer and you have the world's smallest social media icons in the footer of the website. Now, last time I checked, that was anti-social media, not social media. So you want social media right where the phone number is at the top. And don't hide it. If it's important to you, you need to put it where people are going to subscribe, like it, follow it, even subscribe to your blog. Very, very important. Number five mistake, not responsive. Responsive is I can look at the website on a smartphone this big and it looks great. I can look at it on an iPad, it looks great. I can look at it on a desktop and it looks great. Over 40% of all traffic coming to Google is coming through mobile devices. Google is really cracking down on this responsive website because so many people are pulling up websites through their phones. And think about your own habits, right? Either you click on it through a Google search or you're just going right to that website. So not having a mobile responsive website is a big deal to Google and it will prevent you from ranking under important keywords. All right, so here's my fancy homepage. We're gonna take a look at some of the elements I just covered. So, logo, always in the left corner. Remember, we read left to right. Our eye starts at the logo, comes all the way over, and rests right here. The reason this spot is so incredibly important is because that's where our eye naturally pauses for rest. So I want your phone number, and I want your social media icons right here. And a call to action if you'd like. You can have a call to action here as well. Now, think about this is what they call before you fold, and then down here is below the fold. So when someone comes to your website, a lot of you probably have those big sweeping sliders. Usually it takes up about this much, and then there may be there's one, two, three, maybe four different sliders that come across here, which is fine. But still, you see I haven't scrolled down yet. So this whole above the fold, below the fold is an old newspaper concept. You hold up a paper, before you unwrap it, you have the top, you unfold it, there's the bottom. 
Okay. Now what's interesting is you get about eight seconds for someone to come to this home page to decide whether they want to work with you, like you, subscribe to you, follow you. So this above the fold before they ever scroll is really your end game here. Then we want to add what we call a personality indicator. A personality indicator is who are you? How can we help? This might be, um, for me, it's going to be a CEO, a marketing team leader, an individual entrepreneur, and maybe a meeting planner. And by putting that who are you right there, you're not going immediately into what you sell, how you do, what you charge. You are actually making it about them for a change. Now another thing I see as a big mistake is you put a ton of logos too quick in the conversation. Meaning that you have logo, 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 and you're filling up this whole bottom part with logos. You know, be judicious about that because yes, people know you can put the logos right here below the fold and those could be in light gray. Okay, so these could be the logos, but do not just bombard me with logos. It's so important. Now these sliders are super important because you can really manipulate these in a lot of different ways. So on my website, if you go, you'll see that I have content here and then I have my photo is here. There's my photo, nice hair. But you'll see that I've got the, all this blank space here to have a message and then I have a call to action right there. And that's schedule your findability review. So you want your call to action right there. And this is what we call the big promise. The big promise is you are in the right place. We are the best at what we do. And here's where you start. So remember, I've done all this before I even scroll down on your homepage. Remember, eight seconds you get before I leave, before I bounce. So you may have heard of bounce rate. A bounce rate means that I come to the homepage, I don't get what I need, and I leave. I don't go anywhere else on the website. So it's very important that we remember this is about them and not about you. Don't break with convention and make it as easy as possible to tell your story and speak to them like you know them. This is what real findable website design is all about. You can still put your body copy down here for the search engines, right? There's your copy for them, but it has to really sell it fast in order for you to get the real results from your next website update. So keep that in mind is when we're thinking about problems and mistakes that people make, it's usually because we're in a rush. So the first thing I want you to think about is what is the timeline you've chosen? Is that a real timeline? Or is it a fake timeline? So if you're saying, oh, we got to get the new website done in three months. Why? Is it something where we need, you have a big event coming, you have a big trade show, a new product launch? I get that. But make sure you really understand once the website is being seen and is really getting the traction, then you start all over again. Because as entrepreneurs and, and business marketing executives, we get bored easily. And we want to be able to go back in and change this. But just the time when the website is working is when we tend to go up and change it. Why do we do this? Do we get bored? We need a new logo? I, I can't tell you how many logos I've made in my career. I love a logo. But we want that consistency, that long-term um, connection so that people start to recognize what they're seeing here. All right, let's get back to our top 10 biggest mistakes with number six is itty bitty text. You gotta think about what's the average age of the visitor on your website? I work with executives, marketing directors, CEOs. They're usually over the age of 50. So you have to be mindful about the fact that the font needs to be readable and large enough for your target audience. Don't just pick something that's like eight point font and then put it on a white text over an image. It's gonna be very, very difficult to read and it's really a huge waste of very valuable marketing real estate on your homepage. The next one is going to be bad photography. Just say no to stock photography, I see you. Have you guys seen that gal? She's got, she's blonde with a ponytail. She's got the little headset on her head and she must be on millions of websites. I've seen the same gal on so many different sites. My recommendation to you is hire a good photographer. Think about how can I get the very best photos out of, for my website specifically. Make sure that you take good headshots of your team, a great group shot in front of your building, anything to make it look like you are, you got it going on. This is the place you need to work with. This is the place you need to, to, to hire. This is a great place to work. Next one is color theory. If I see navy blue, white, 
and black. One more time on a corporate website, I think I'm gonna get sick. Go to your top five competitors. Look at their websites. Competitor one, competitor two, competitor three, and so on. If they all have navy blue, gray, and white, don't do that. Do something completely different. Because if I'm going from competitor to competitor to competitor, if you all look the same, then you are all the same. So at some point you have to step up and say, we're not gonna look like that anymore. We're gonna look friendly, we're gonna use bright colors, we're gonna be maybe a little trendier, as opposed to the stuffed shirt, tie, jacket look on our website. Remember, your website is a direct reflection of what it's like to work with you. So if you look boring, you probably are boring, okay? All right, number nine is going to be home. So when you look and Google yourself, you'll see that right inside of the home page, there's a home button. No one needs a home button anymore, okay? You don't need it. People understand that they're at the home page. You don't need to tell them to go home. Don't give that valuable real estate to home. Typically people will click on the logo and they know the logo will take them home. So speak, speak like you know them, not just your standard home buttons. And then finally, I want you to rethink navigation. Rethink navigation, meaning if every single buddy, everyone has about us, services, testimonials, and contact us, I want you to think different. So how could we say about us differently? Meet our team, meet our expert team. Hmm, a little bit better than about us. How about services? Um, you could say something along the lines of um, meet our experts, our expert process, our proven strategy. Don't use the word services. It's just so overused. So, and then of course, testimonials. Maybe you call it rave reviews, standing ovations. Think outside the box around these words. Contact us, boring. Let's chat, let's talk, let's meet, speak to an expert, schedule a call. Contact us is the worst call to action on the planet. So when we're thinking about it, I don't want to see any itty bitty text. Remember, keep in mind your audience is a certain age. Make sure you're using that font for them. Bad photos, just stop using talk, stock photography. Hire a photographer to come in and take good photos. Color theory. Check out your competitors' websites. Look at what they're predominantly doing with their color theory on their website. Do something completely different so you stand out from the pack. No homes. No home page. No homes in your navigation. Don't need a home. Everyone knows how to get home. They click on the logo. And then finally, rethink that navigation. About Us Services, Testimonials, Contact Us is on probably every single website on the internet, unless they've come to one of my programs. It's boring. You're making yourself look like every other competitor in your space. Rethink how you talk about services, how you talk about your team, and ultimately how I would start that very first virtual handshake. Would you like to chat? Would you like to talk? Would you like to meet? Talk to an expert? Rethink how you are communicating when they come to that website. Remember, you get eight seconds to make a first impression. Do it right and make it count. Woo, she's bossy. So yes, I am. I have a lot of very specific ideas around what makes a good website. And I've also worked with thousands of business owners and seen the mistakes. And hopefully my video today has given you a cheat sheet on all the things you're not going to do on your next website. Make sure to visit us at findability.com. We have private coaching, retreats, and speaking to connect with your ideal online customer. Check it out.